like one of the biggest leaks in poker is probably playing like too loose early and too tight deep when people actually, if everyone's doing that, then naturally we want to play tight early and loose deep, you know? And so you should always try to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Uh, I wonder if any of your products go into this is how pre fall varies a lot in the different stages of the tournament. Is that uh, maybe the, um, what is it, the closer perhaps? Or yeah, that be the we AI? definitely reference that some in the closer. Okay, but yeah, because there's some things, subtleties there that uh, are not so obvious. Uh, I uh, I messed up quite a, a handful of those things during playing a bit of tournaments myself. So that's something I'm personally curious about, and like I think that which be side did you error on? On playing too loose, like playing too many suited connectors and that kind of shit. Um, I mean, some obvious things are like don't play pocket pairs from early position. It seems stupid when you think about it. Uh, I mean, I was rejamming some pocket pairs in some bad spots also, as an example. I don't think my post slop's really that good in comparison to what uh, the short post slop should be, but that's a much more complicated fix. Like, I'm kind of, I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, I now have, like, a set of problem of problems, and now how do I, like, optimize for which one, as you, as you like, start to branch out and do too many things, you, you have this situation of, okay, there's a problem of problems uh, of like how to fix, or where does it make sense to like, uh, to go deeper into, or where does it doesn't, where does it not? And so I decided, okay, I, it, for tournaments, I'm not gonna play that much. So what I would like to do is, but I need to be able to like assist people to guide them towards the right path of what they, how to become successful. So I need to be like knowledgeable enough to do that and to tell them, okay, this is where the value's at. You need to focus on this, which would be, um, you know, around the bubble play or whatever it is, like future game to some extent, like a limited amount. And then um, a lot of the pre-flop for, pre-flop and ICM for um, uh, final table, there's huge value there. Um, beyond that, kind of can learn cash games on the side and I'll be, get you to a pretty confident level anyway. And if I was personally gonna learn tournaments, I would focus on like the ICM stuff and uh, you're also playing like smaller fields, bigger buy-ins, right? So the frequency in which you get to this stage where it matters is much higher. You know, a lot of people, and I would say the vast majority of poker players, even the ones that would be looking to you for guidance, are people that are playing these $400 tournaments that have 3,000 people. And they need to, to know the knowledge to get there. You know, they're gonna get there at such a rare Fair frequency. Point. It's kind of like what you talked about before is studying pre-flop before flop turn in a river. Well, yeah, they could have the best future equity or you know, game decisions, ICM ever, but if they're not gonna get there to be able to use them, what does it matter? So I think that the average person really needs to dial in the earlier stages stuff better. Like I had you make a, a very... webinar with a student recently and they were like, I really like getting their level five because I hate when all the pots are like multi-way and you know, people keep sucking out and I'm like, okay, so you're saying pots are big and why not just get there earlier, play tighter and raise bigger and have good hands and just like pick up all the dead money. And then like that aspect, which is one of the things people are weakest at, like uh, it compounds, it snowballs into a bigger benefit. So now you have more starting, like more chips. And so the whales in the middle stages of the tournament are either out of the tournament or they typically have a lot of chips. There's not a lot of whales that have like starting stack when you late reg. And so now you have like two, three starting stacks and you're deeper with the whales. Plus you can take bad beats from the other short stacks. And so the equity of getting there on time for these like players, that's one of the biggest leaks I see. Um, yeah, those are some very good points. One thing I wanna point out that slightly contrasting is that you it, when you're factoring in an important factor in the life game tree of things, you have to factor in the time that you're uh, applying for things. This guy that when he's talking about sounds like he's optimizing for equity, in which case you're 100% right, where he should get there early and he should try to like, there's loads of equity in the beginning where all these guys are, you know, the whales of full buy-in or whatever, and people play like shit deep. And uh, yeah, you just raise bigger. You're, I mean, you're 100% right. And you make a very valid point. Um, well, before I say that, let me just add that if you're optimizing for time plus money, then you actually do want to late register unless it's a knockout tournament is my understanding because I have See, to thought. And that's what I thought at first too. And that's one of the benefits of having these webinars and having me and Fox and all of our content 
is I said the same thing, you know, it's like, but sometimes the hourly in these other situations is way higher and it's worth it. Exactly what you said. And Foxy made like an incredible point that like every time we're playing poker, it's a learning experience too. And so it's not just about the hourly, it's about the opportunity to improve and learn. And so when you think of it from that perspective, it's like, yeah, max late regging might have the best hourly, but are you really going to learn anything at all in those 10 hands before you bust your double? That's a fair point. Yes. So uh, I guess I, when you're thinking I was about on it, your side of the coin until three days ago, actually. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I still wonder if it makes sense for me to like play through because, but it definitely makes sense for a lot of the people who are aspiring to make money to play from the beginning. I think that makes a lot of yeah. sense. And also you made a very good point about what they should focus on in, um, in the tournament to get better. But there's, you actually brought up a point to me that I think is really valid once they get to somewhere around the, uh, or brought up an idea to me that I think is really important once they get to the, around the final table, which is that once the buy-ins of these things become really big for a lot of the people, all of a sudden their, their typical like weaknesses come out and their more like base behavior comes out where, I mean, this can mean a number of things. But uh, one of the problems that I just imagine a lot of like these up and coming players ha uh, having is that they'll be like wildly in their head and not be able to, they'll just be really, really predictable in a lot of the spots and not be able to like exploit people properly. So it might actually make sense for them to focus more on their mindset once they get to that point and kind of just think, okay, this is what, and maybe even to pre-prepare and think, okay, this is what I should do against this kind of player and this kind of player and that, that thing. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I definitely agree, but I also think that you're looking at the perspective of people trying to exploit others, uh, when in reality, the average player is just thinking about how they want to play their hand. And then when they're faced with a decision, maybe it's verse aggression, they're like, okay, this guy's tighter, this guy's loose, and then they play their decision. That's their version of an exploit. And so I don't think that the average player is like really doing anything, I would say. Um, but I will say that like one of the biggest leaks in poker is probably playing like too loose early and too tight deep when people actually, if everyone's doing that, then naturally we want to play tight early and loose deep, you know? And so you should always try to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing.